We're back once again as we study the spiritual gifts. Thank you for joining us, those of you watching by DVD. Thank you for being here in the classroom, those of you who are students here. In the last session, we talked about the gift of giving. We talked about how God blesses people with means, with money and um, material resources, and then the gift of giving is where the Holy Spirit empowers that person to look for opportunities to give that money to meet needs in the body of Christ. And that these people find that when they give money away, God not only replaces that money, but he gives even more so that they continue to be a channel of blessing in the body. And the one thing we mentioned is the true sign of a person with the gift of giving is they don't want anybody to know. They want it to be private and they get personal joy and satisfaction out of knowing that they've helped other people. In this session, we're going to continue looking at some gifts that are associated with the hand. This one definitely is associated with the hand. It is the gift of helps. It would be hard not to have the gift of helps and not use your hands. There is a woman I know named Connie. Connie is very active in my church. She's found a place in ministry that is perfect for her gift of helps. To some people, you may hear what she does and think, I would never want to do that, or that's a spiritual gift, or how is it that that blesses the body of Christ? Connie works on the production team. My church is a very large church. Some of your church ha churches have a production team. It would be the people who are behind the scenes. They make sure the microphones run, that the lighting is, is right, that the scenery is all set up, that uh, the props have been moved into place. Connie's job is to sit down front near the pastor and make sure that the pastor has his microphone clipped on properly and that he uses a cord instead of a wireless mic, that the cord is carefully uh, led and followed him up there so it doesn't get tangled. She goes and she takes the podium that he stands behind and she lifts it up to the stage and sets it down. Later she'll come and take that podium down. If there are dramas that are on stage, she'll make sure that the props are moved into position. You may have seen people dressed all in black who kind of secretly move and they move the props around. That's Connie's job. That is the gift of helps. It is a behind the scenes gift. It is often an overlooked gift. I don't think anybody in the audience, unless they were purposely looking, would even notice Connie because they're focusing on the pastor coming up or on the actors who will be on the drama. And they overlook the person who's making sure that everything is set up properly so that people can enjoy what's about to take place. Connie tells me that she takes great joy in knowing other people overlook her contribution because she knows that she made a contribution. And when she looks at whatever happened in the service where she was serving, she knows that she played a part in making it happen. And when the service goes very well, she knows she has helped along with the pastor and the actors and the other musicians who are up front. She's helped to make sure that the service went well. The gift of helps is a gift that is much needed in the body of Christ and perhaps even more so than the other gifts. How many leaders do you really need in the church as compared to how many people do you need who have the gift of helps to make things happen behind the scenes. There's only a few people who can stand up front. Not everybody can get up front. First, not everybody wants to. And secondly, there aren't that many opportunities for people to do it. But how many people are needed behind the scenes to make happen what takes place in front? Many, many, many more. And yet we don't always honor these people. Let's open our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 
one of the four passages having to do with spiritual gifts that we have focused on. Because I do want to mention there are many other times spiritual gifts are mentioned in the New Testament. But there's only four places where they really are mentioned in more detail. And that would be uh, Romans chapter 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Ephesians chapter 4, and 1 Peter chapter 4. Well, as we look at 1 Corinthians 12, we're going to go down to verse 28, where we have been many times before, and we're going to read and we're going to look for the gift of helps, as it's mentioned here. It says, Now you are the body of Christ and each of you a part of it. And in the church, God has appointed, first of all, apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then workers of miracles, also those having gifts of healing, those able to help others. So it is listed very near the top of the list, but it doesn't mean that it's the most important gift because there are no most important gifts. They're equally important. This is a list of categories of gifts. And so it's listed in its appropriate category, which we'll talk about later. Of course, we've gone to this verse because we want to see what the Greek says about the gift of helps. In my version, it says, those able to help others. Your version may say something different, but the idea is that there is a spiritual gift of helps where the Holy Spirit comes and works through a yielded believer and allows them to use the gift of helps to bless other people. Behind the scenes, unnoticed, unmentioned, without merit, but very much contributing to the overall ministry of the church. Now when we look at the gift of helps in the Greek, the term is antilispus. And T. Lispus. It's G484. There is a lexicon called Thayer's, a lexicon meaning explanation of terms, and it says the simple meaning is to aid. It also uses to help, but that would be defining the term by the term, which you do not do. It's the word to aid. In Vine's Bible Dictionary, which we've used before, it continues with that thought and says, rendering assistance, especially to the weak and the needy. Hmm, interesting. One talks about just providing assistance. In Vine's, it also says there's a component of helping those who are weak or needy. In this case, we may be talking about those people who outside of church assist those who are elderly, those who are disabled, with tasks around their home to ensure that they're able to get everything done they need to get done. But it also means those people within the church who assist with people attending church who may in fact be newcomers and in a sense they're weak and needy, they don't know the church, those who are in wheelchairs, making sure they get to the right place where they'll be comfortable. So it may very well mean that. But this is a general term of rendering assistance wherever needed. This, in fact, is the hallmark of the gift of helps. Whatever needs to be done, whenever it needs to be done, wherever it needs to be done, count me in. I'm there. And often, they go ahead and they take on a task without anybody even telling them. They see a need, they meet the need. They see a problem, they solve the problem. They are the people in the church that make the church operations run smoothly to the point where you don't even notice them. We don't notice how a clock moves around. We only look at it when we want to tell time. Of course, today it's digital, but in the clocks that have hands, we may notice a second hand going around, but we don't notice the minute and the hour hand, yet it operates smoothly and it just functions. It just does its job. 
That's what the gift of helps is all about. The definition that we're going to use is to serve or minister in practical ways. To serve or minister in practical ways. And the emphasis is on practical ways. Practical meaning those things that need to be done, that must be done, and they actually serve as a benefit to others. The purpose of the gift? To perform necessary tasks that support ministry. To perform necessary tasks that support ministry. Here's another key point. When I talk to Connie about the gift of helps, a gift that I do not have, and I have talked to many people who have these gifts so that I can understand what these gifts are like from people who actually have the gifts. I understand teaching. I understand knowledge. They're my gifts. But all the other ones that I've talked about, I don't really know because they're not my gift. It makes sense to go to people who have those gifts and say, tell me about your gift. Tell me about what you do. Tell me about how you feel. Tell me about what you think you're doing that benefits the church. And much of that has been included in these presentations. And Connie says that what gives her the greatest joy is to know that what she's doing frees other people up to do what they need to do. In other words, the pastor doesn't have to make sure his microphone doesn't get tangled. The pastor doesn't have to worry that the podium is up there and maybe lift it up himself. And the actors don't have to worry that the scenery is in place and the props are in their proper location. Connie gets joy out of knowing that she did something that frees other people up to do their job. And it's the kind of thing that everyone with the gift of helps, those of you in the classroom, those of you who are watching by DVD, you have the gift of helps. You understand what I'm talking about. You take joy doing this behind the scenes and you know that what you do then frees other people up. Those people who are before the body of Christ to do what they need to do. The role of the gift of helps is in managing the church. We've talked about how there's a a set of roles and it comes out of this 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 28 through uh, 30. And they're categories. One is founding the church, which I've come as I've uh, continued my study to understand it's not just founding, it's making sure that the church is expanding. Expanding in the sense of sharing the gospel with others, bringing others to Christ, as well as starting new ministries, as well as founding new churches. It's expanding the church. So I'm going to begin to use that phrase instead of founding. Expanding the church, instructing the church, uh, caring for the church, managing the church, and providing the church with a message that is given to God for a, by God for a special reason. The gift mix often associated with the gift of helps would be mercy. I see somebody who's struggling and I go and I help them with the tasks that need to be done for them. I, in a sense, replace them with what they ordinarily would do so they're freed up to get well. The gift of encouragement. A person is wandering from the faith and they're struggling with some issue in their life and you come alongside them and you help them deal with that and perhaps help them with practical tasks that they're overlooking because they're so wrapped up with the issue that they're dealing with. Or the gift of administration, which makes a lot of sense that the people who have the gift of helps would also have the gift of planning the course that the church would be taking and then doing the things that need to be done to get the, the task accomplished, ordering materials, making sure that the, uh, the laborers are available to do the work. Going to the commentators, Chuck Smith says, associated with the office of deacon. Once again, we get this idea that there are offices and that those individuals are uniquely equipped to perform that office. 
And we've talked about deacon before being the people who have the responsibility of caring for the poor or ensuring that the, t the maintenance of the church is taken care of. Those are people who would need the gift of helps. Chuck Smith continues, it's performing the many tasks that need to be done in order that the church might offer a full range of ministry programs. They don't want wait to be asked to do things. They just see a need and they do it. And they don't like to draw attention to themselves. Ministry Tools defines it this way, to render support or assistance to others in the body so as to free them up for ministry. See these common themes running through the commentators that we've talked about before. Visual aid. Have you ever gone to a really nice restaurant, an elegant restaurant, one that costs a lot of money? There usually is a waiter who will have a cloth over their arm. It's kind of a sign of elegance. And they will offer that to an individual if it's needed for a purpose. They will use it to hold on to a hot plate as they put it down on the table. That's the image I want you to have. A waiter who is a server, willing to do whatever needs to be done that other people would have to do ordinarily. Ordinarily, I'd have to go get my own bowls of, of food and set them out. The waiter ensures that the food is there so the people can enjoy their experience. They serve so that others might have a pleasant experience. The Holy Spirit empowers them to help out where needed in such a way that it is effective ministry and their helpful service has a number of characteristics associated with them. One, it's beneficial. Two, it's valuable. Three, it's necessary. And four, it should be appreciated. In the Bible, there are a number of examples of people with the gift of helps, but I'm just going to point out one. If you would open your Bible, please, to Ephesians chapter 6, there's just a short section that talks about Paul's colleague, and it's right at the end of Ephesians 6 in verse 21. And Paul talks about his associate, his dear brother and faithful servant. And in the Greek, the name is Tuchaikos. Tuchaikos. And we've said before where in Hebrew and in Aramaic and in Greek, there's often this kind of ch sound out of the throat. Sounds like they're clearing their throat, but it's part of their language. So, Tuchaikas is the name. And he says, Tuchaikas, the dear brother and faithful servant in the Lord, will tell you everything so that you may also know how I am and what I am doing. I am sending him to you for this very purpose that you may know how we are and that he may encourage you. He was sent by Paul to do a task. No one else in the church where they were located in uh, another part of Paul's missionary journey knew what the task was, but it was simply to deliver a message. It needed to be done. It freed Paul up from having to go all the way over to the church of Corinth and deliver the message himself. And notice that Paul, in talking about Tuchaikos, says he's a dear brother. He's a faithful servant. He's saying he's very close to my heart. And I have noticed over the years he's very faithful and he has a servant heart. And that's what you will find with the people who have the gift of helps. We strive to serve the contemporary Christian community with a variety of Christian educational and evangelistic resources. To see TVS Seminary's database, please visit tvsseminary.com. I want to tell you a story out of my personal experience about uh, a married couple who have, I've known very well, but who have since left our church. And that's the point of the story. 
The name is, uh, their names are Mike and Rachel. Rachel was one of those pillar people of the church, one of those people who support the church and they are so important to the church that it's almost like it couldn't function without her. I think when Rachel left, we had to have five people take her place in the, in the ministries that she was involved with. She was just one of those people who come along every so often. She had the gift of leadership. He had the gift of discernment. She became an elder in our church. Everyone knew Rachel. Everyone respected Rachel. I personally thought she was our most effective elder because every time I saw Rachel, she was meeting with someone in the church to hear their concerns about the church or to help intervene in some sort of conflict that was taking place between two people. And she was in coffee shops and restaurants and at church, highly visible, highly active, highly appreciated and valued in our church. It was really a loss when Rachel left. And I would imagine a real blessing to the church she went to. And then there was Mike. Almost no one knew Mike, and almost no one knew the ministry that he was involved with. And I was so grateful to our pastor that when we had a little sending off party for Mike and Rachel, thanking them for the things they had done in our church, and wishing them well, and giving them our blessing as we sent them out to another church, that he talked a great deal about Rachel, and then he turned to Mike and he said, Mike, you will never know on this side of heaven how important you have been to this church. I know that you look at your wife and you see all the people who appreciate her, all the people she has helped, but I know how important you have been to our church. Because every time I see you, you're setting up tables and chairs, or you're breaking down scenery, or you're picking up paper that's scattered around so people can see how nice the church facility looks. And every time I go into the washroom, I see you wiping down the countertops and making sure that the paper dispensers are filled. Mike, what you do is just as important as what your wife has done, and we will miss you terribly. And I went, yay God! Mike was a close friend of mine, and I often felt, wondered how Mike felt having his wife be so highly visible, highly appreciated, and Mike was kind of in her shadow, just kind of behind the scenes. And before he left, I threw my arms around him and said, Mike, I want to tell you, I could not agree with the pastor more. You are such a dear brother in Christ, and you've been such a faithful servant, and our church is going to miss you desperately, and the church you're going to they are going to be awfully fortunate that you're coming to them. I think that Mike's spirit was a little uh, uncomfortable with all the attention. I don't think he particularly liked being in the spotlight because that's just not who he was, is. It's not how he's gifted. It's I really don't want people to know what I'm doing. And now suddenly you're putting the spotlight on me. Whoa, I don't like this. But I bet there was another part of him deep down inside that said thank you for acknowledging the work that I have done. For there are people we have talked about before with the behind the scenes gift, people who operate in the shadows, people that are not visible to us. We just take them for granted. We just assume they're doing their job and we never ever take a moment to pull them aside and to share our appreciation for what they do. Believe me, teachers, pastors, you get a lot of affirmation. People will tell you what you said, what you did, the way the service went, it was just so wonderful. Oh, thank you. They never say that to the people who have the gift of helps, the people who have put the podium on the stage and made sure that the wire wasn't tangled. They never look at the people who are there to repair the 
uh, roof of the church because there's a leak. We never even think about them. You can pull up a name right now of somebody in your church who is like Mike, who has the gift of helps, who operates behind the scenes, and is kind of the invisible person. Be sure to thank that person this coming Sunday for whatever they do in your church. It will be a blessing to you and it will be an encouragement to them. But don't be surprised if they feel a little awkward that they're being put in the spotlight and being recognized. Well, I have some questions for you and I would like you to consider these personally and then decide, is this something that you may have the spiritual gift of? Has God worked through you first to do practical tasks around the church that need to be done? Second, has God worked through you to take the initiative on your own without anyone telling you to take care of a task that needs to be done? And number three, has God worked through you to make you a person who feels uncomfortable that others are thanking you for your contribution and for being made visible to the body of Christ? Do any of those things apply to you? And if they do, you may very well have the spiritual gift of helps. If so, celebrate it, use it, and be blessed because of it. Well, next time, please join us as we move to two other gifts of the hands. We have previously talked about two associated with the mouth, tongues and interpretation, that are part of these sign gifts that are highly controversial in the church. We now are going to move to two associated with the hands that have to do with controversial gifts. Next time, the gifts of healing, and the time after that, the gifts of miracles. So please join us for those sessions. Thank you.